Now today, I'm hoping I'm going to be feeling a little bit better. I took a couple days off and did some bed rest and uh, sequestering, but to be honest, Karen and I are both sick, so I'm going to limit my time out here in the garage today. Because I'm finishing up on this project, or almost finishing up, a couple other little details to do here. One of the things it's going to allow me to do is do a couple little extra things that I wasn't sure I'd be able to do before springtime came. And today I'm going to start the upgrades, the little things that I had planned for doing on the RD. And maybe if the sun comes out later, and it should, it's looking like it's going to be a sunny day, get some nice pictures. I always like to do some nice pictures before I ride one of my restorations. And I've explained why they, with the FZR, they, they can, if you don't have enough pictures and you crash the bike, you're going to be sorry. Anyway, that's a sad note. I shouldn't even be saying that. Beside the point, I have a couple hours to spend today. I want to get started on our little RD project. Now, because we were fortunate enough to finish up the 650 project, the things I wanted to address today are that we have a part that I wanted to polish on the polishing wheel. I wanted to pull a headlight apart, and this is, this is a little involved because there's a lot of wires going through there. I wanted to refinish these and I wanted to paint the mirrors. So I have a couple of days of painting and sanding and grinding and everything. I didn't want to do that where it would delay the 650 being finished because you never knew how the weather was going to play out. But it looks like we're going to have plenty of time to do this now since years from now when people are looking at this video and realize this was during the coronavirus we were shooting this. And so I have plenty of time that I'm sequestered and I want to take care of that. That's the top priority on my list. Now this is true, any bike you restore and you put a lot of time and a lot of energy and uh, whatever, even money, what happens at some point in time you got to maintain it. You got to look around for little things that need to be repainted, uh, repolished or refinished or whatever. Or else what happens, the bikes just go downhill gradually and, and then at some point in time it's, you say, gee, it's not even worth doing the work. Now I've tried to be meticulous about maintaining the bikes after I ride them in salt, ride them in the rain, or just taking care of stone chips on the front of the bike and repainting parts that look scuffed up or need to be refinished. I've tried to be really meticulous about it. And I think in the end, it's totally paid off because all of these bikes, these are driver bikes. They're not collect, they're not Jay Leno bikes. They just sit in a garage all day. The whole purpose for having these motorcycles is to ride them. If you couldn't ride them, well, and that's the point. The point is if you buy older and older and older bikes, they're really not fun to ride. They're a bitch to ride. And if you buy modern bikes, well, they're modern bikes and they're fun, but they don't have the charm. I don't think they have the charm that these bikes have. Now, another potential project I have, since we're coming up on time for a, a wheel change on the, the other Suzuki, I thought one of the things I could do, I always wanted to make this set of gloss black wheels. I could take the, this rim off and do the paint, put the new tire on it, and then ride around one season with the back wheel black and the front wheel gold. And I don't know about that, but the first thing is I do like I do like the evil twin concept. I love being able to change your bike out like changing your clothes and making it look like something totally different. This was our original evil twin, and he's about as evil as it gets. We had people convinced it was a West Cooley bike and then convinced it was a replica bike and then something else and oh. But anyway. The, to me, is just one thing about it. It's just a great bike. That's the one you keep for life. And if it warms up later, I'll come out and shoot some more pictures. But right now, it's pretty bitter cold out here. I want to go have my coffee. And I want to, well, before I go in, I got to pull those parts off the RD. And then go have, well, I'm going to have the coffee first. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show what a coward I am. I usually like that, like to get something done out here. I have to change, still changing battery the battery tenders, but boy, every time I look at this, just really exceeds my wildest dream. Now, I decided to do this first. It looks like the sun is just starting to come out to where I can do, and I'll put the pictures that I take at the end of this. I don't wanna, I wanna do my photo shoot. See, the, the sun is not bright. And when it's really bright, what I found out the first day I took pictures, when it's really bright, you get too many reflections. 
everything's shiny on this bike. Maybe I should paint some of it flat black, but I want to do just a quick walk around for people that haven't seen it in one piece yet, and then we're going to start working on the RD. Now, what I, in, in my mind, I'm thinking one of the things I want to do, I want to shoot some pictures with the light just like it is now. Some of the pictures with the light at, uh, at midday, and some of them maybe just before it gets dark or in the evening. So I'll do that over the course of the day and then put the pictures at the end of the video if it's appropriate. Now how much fun is this? You can start your coffee machine up, go out to the window, and <laughs> take some pictures. And we got to pull that RD, the RD parts apart, but I need, I need an extra cup of coffee today. And it's colder out there than I thought it was. No wonder I'm so cold out there. Look at this, 33 degrees. The real feel is 25. What a baby. Holy mackerel. I need extra coffee. Oh, the birds are here. The birds are here to make me feel better. <laughs> they always make me feel better. So we did have a couple of days with the workbench empty, but, and we do have tires to change, but it is just... In this temperature, I want to get some parts off of that RD. It's a lot easier to be working in the cellar than out in that 33 degree garage. Now even just walking by this guy, as I walk out to the garage, I, I have to stop and look, I have to oogle. And from that photo shoot I shot the other day, I can see some of the things, some of the angles that the bike really looks good at. Some of them it looks, I think, really good. And no matter what the lighting is, I love those gold wheels. Boy, I love the gold color. And it, it, did, it did one thing for me that was very reminiscent. It reminded me in a roundabout May of my old black and gold RDs. They didn't have that real nice shiny gold paint, but boy, a lot of good memories in those old Amar bikes. Uh, if I only had a bigger garage. Oh my God. Yeah. When I hit the lottery, I am going to put an extension on the garage. A big extension with heat and air conditioning. But right now, let's get this bike in position. We can pull it, get it right here, right about here. That's where the lighting is good. And time to work. Now getting the headlight off is kind of a straightforward thing, but there's a lot of wires in there. And I want to be really careful I don't pinch them. And they're, they're all 43 years old, so in dog years, they're already dead. Okay, so the next step is to disconnect the headlight bulb, get that out of the way. And this is the part we're going to want to polish on the wheel. And because it's pitted, there's only a certain amount. Yeah, you really can't go down into bare metal. But we could definitely do clean it up just a little bit. So as I'm looking at the headlight bulb and I'm just laughing, thinking how much different this is than looking under the seat of that uh, 650, this looked like a relatively simple thing, but all those wires have to get snaked down through that hole. And I, the ones when I disconnect the blinkers, of course, I'll mark them with a piece of tape. And I don't want any of them to get pinched or any of these 43 year old connectors to get to where they're not making a good connection. So the next thing, of course, I've got to loosen up the bulb loosen up the bolt and take the blinkers off on each side and then mark which is which obviously if they're wrong you would just switch them back the other way but easier to mark them now a good tip when you're working on something like this where there's a lot of little pieces screws connectors if you drop something on a fender you could put a chip in a paint it's a lot easier especially when it's real cold your hands are frozen I like to just lay a, a towel on the part so there's no way that I can chip that paint, hopefully. Now one of the things I was able to accumulate over the years, people were throwing them away, giving away, in fact, Luciano gave me a bunch of them, is extra stalks, extra blinkers, because these are prone to, first they get very, they're very prone to oxidation. And of course, uh, if, if I want to keep this bike with the, the, original, the original blinkers, and I, I don't want to lose any of this, I know I have to have the ground wire on there. Ground wires on, and this is, oh, how nice. I've already got them marked. How smart am I? Look at that. They were already marked. So I can disconnect this. Wow. 
You might think I might have done this before. This can come off. And now what's a really handy idea is put it right back on there. It's a good place to store it so we don't lose it, misplace it. I didn't realize how cold it was out here. I'm, I was getting spoiled these 45, 50 degree days we were having. Okay, that's ready to take apart. I just got to do the same thing to the other side. Now, of course, I like working on old motorcycles equally, but when I work on a bike that's relatively simple like this, I just think, what? How nice it is. I don't need a computer to diagnose things. What I need is a box of main jets and I'm ready to do my thing. Now, this one, since I have these marked, oh, look at that, left, right. It's about time I kind of figured some of this out, but it's always a good idea if you don't know where these things go, mark it with a little piece of tape, we'll put red tape on one and blue tape on the other, and whatever. I just dropped that washer. I didn't do that on purpose either. I wanted to show if that dropped down on a fender, you could chip it. This is relatively simple, but I've got to be really delicate about it. I've got to take one wiring group at a time and force it through. Now on a GS, it's some of the wires come through one hole and out the other one, and you've got to break them. I don't remember, because there's only one hole, I don't want to break this, but all of these wires, you've got to be real careful and some of them, actually, it would be to my advantage, probably, to get a hairdryer and warm them since it's so cold out here. Get this out, get that out. But eventually, they will go through. You just got to do them one at a time. And the trick is, if you can fish them out from the back one by one, especially the ones that have connectors on them, otherwise, there's a log jam, and it's hard to get the last, the last of them out. And these big connectors, one by one, to just to push them through. Again, a trick here is just to be careful and not to pull any of the things apart. It does take a little patience. Ouch! And a couple of knuckles. There we go. Now, all of that's going to have to go back in here very carefully. While I have this apart, all of these I'll clean up in here with simple green. But that's the shell we're looking for. That's what I wanted to get. I'll pull the rubber bushings out. And the shell, of course, is in pretty rough shape. It's taken a beating. It's rusty inside. When we put it back, it's going to be brand new. It's going to be better than brand new. And here's where that the stick on the end of a microfiber really comes in handy. Because a lot of these spots you never can get to when the headlight's in place. I may as well, while I have it in here, clean up in here. And I always have a, my saying is always, when you have something apart, clean or polish or paint whatever you can conveniently. Just a habit of mine, I like to lay everything out in the order I took it apart. This is kind of self-explanatory, but if this were a more complex job, I'd want to go. Now I know putting it back together, I have to go in this direction. Now with the instruments, I've got to take the, the cables off. And these things are really, you know, as I take it apart, I realize they're in, they're in worse shape than I thought they were. There's a, a set of wires that goes inside to connect that. I've got two small bolts I have to disconnect, and I can take the, the speedometer and the tachometer will come right out. And again, this is kind of one of those things, kind of self-explanatory, but it always pays to save all the nuts and washers and everything in the sequence you take them out. So at the end of the job, you don't have, and I have had it from time to time, ah, there's an extra, where did that washer go or something? Okay, so with these two off, there's rubber grommets in here to keep this rubber mounted, of course. And now I've got to pull this up and disconnect the wires. And let's see if I can disconnect them down here. That'll be a lot easier. Now, after looking at the way this is, I think the easiest way to do this is to just connect the bulbs. And I can look here. I can see that this is, this is the blue. This is, of course, if you have them wrong, you've got to put them back in. This is blue, brown, blue, brown, blue, brown, blue, brown. 
and yellow at the bottom. And then we can just unplug these, put this down. These will come right out so just for bolt replace for a bulb replacement purposes. Okay, you can see that all the the instruments come right off. I've marked these are just the lights. Which which one is this? This is uh, the high beam light. Okay, so we have them all marked there. Now they can get now the wire can come right out the bottom, and we're ready. We can take this canister off, hopefully. Now there's also this rubber gasket that comes off, goes in between the instruments because everything is rubber mounted. These bikes really were vibrators. And there's two bolts inside, and then we can take our canister, our, our cover off, and the cover is what we want to restore. Okay, two bolts, two cap nuts here, and these canisters will be off. I'm keeping all the bolts segregated, which go with which part. Not that that's critical, but, and of course, all these bolts and hardware and cap nuts, everything will get polished. Actually, everything's going to get polished. When we put this back, it'll be a nice, very, only going to take me a couple days to do this, a really nice upgrade. And I didn't anticipate doing this if the 650 project went on longer than expected, but 650 project went right on the way it should. Now that car comes off, now you can see this. Two bolts in there. And that's the part we wanted to restore. It's all chewed up. Yeah, it's chewed up in the back and that. We're gonna, we're gonna make it better than new. Now just a quick minute to clean up anything we can while we have this apart. It only takes, it takes seconds to do this. And then when putting it back together, we'll be, of course we'll be dealing with all nice clean parts, clean or great replaced hardware. Just makes it so much nicer working on it. And if you don't enjoy doing this, what's the point? And <laughs> okay, so one side we have all just straightened out as best we can. Now we gotta basically do the same thing to the other side. Mark the wires, mark the cable. Make sure we have everything. And what I have, I have everything over on a workbench. Sort it out so that I don't wind up putting, even though this probably wouldn't matter, I like to put the same bolts back in the same places, if possible. And it's just my habit when I take things apart, I like to, again, I'm going, the last thing that went in, I'm going to work my way back when I put this all back together. So as I polish parts, paint parts, I'll just put them back into the sequence that I had them out here. Now, unfortunately, this is the side that really took a beating. I think, I don't remember if this is the side. I've had this apart already, and... I didn't have a spare part. I had a spare speedometer and I have a spare tack, but I didn't have a spare cover. And so this is gonna give me a chance to see what dents or what Bondo is in there. And I think what I did when I did the original, uh, had this apart, I just couldn't get the part. So I wound up just painting it rather than doing what I'm doing right now, a total, get it, get it like to where it's better than new. This is a good time too while I have the cables apart. I'm just gonna let a couple of drops of three and one oil work its way down in there. We'll eventually pull these out, wipe them off, but it never hurts while you have things apart. These are the little things you can do to just, they're just ordinary three and one oil. Just make your life easier or that 43 years from now, the cables don't break. Now, because this is 43 years old, I don't wanna disturb these wires. Now look down here, you can see they've already been rubbed through. So I'll put some black tape over that, of course. And rather than just try to pull those out, I'm going to disconnect them. I already disconnected one, and I'll mark these. Well, you don't even have to mark them. It's a, it's a white and green. That's easy, an easy peasy. But this, this is one of the ones I just didn't want to disturb that. See, so, you now while I have things apart, this is the kind of things I look for. See, that, that wired air is looking like that the insulation is a little ratty. Well, we have some black tape. Now, what happens is these plastic covers get rock hard. And when you go to force something back, they just snap like that. So I just, this is a simple thing of just getting a little black tape on there to keep it from getting any worse. And it's all these little maintenance things that add up and allow you to have a bike that's 43 years old and still pretty reliable. Sometimes it's just a simple thing like a piece of black tape that'll keep that wire from rubbing any worse. 
Now, I'll look at every one of these wires carefully. I want to see if I have any other that looks suspicious. And a good idea when you do this, when I come out, I'll do this as a separate thing later today or tomorrow. When you do this, is take a hairdryer, warm it up, because these wires get brittle with time. When it, and right now it's so cold, my nose is running already. So I've got the big one done, and this is the one I wanted to resolve. I didn't want to. I didn't want to put this all back together and have some wire that's chafing or rubbing. Okay, we're left with those two bolts to take off, that piece to take off, and then hopefully we can get ourselves down in the cellar where, where it's a little bit warmer and more pleasant to work. And if you have, like I have, a passion for working on these old motorcycles, you'll know the feeling of once you get these parts off and get them down into the heated garage. I'm sure that's not true in California or Florida, but it's true right here. The idea is just to get the parts downstairs where it's warm. And we'll get another cup of coffee going, and we will. Here we go. We're pretty, we're pretty much ready to go downstairs. So it's just the final thing to get this cleaned up out here a little bit and put this bike back in a, his parking spot because we'll have these parts downstairs for a few days and we're going to want to do some other work on the 650 but for now getting this see here's the big thing getting these parts down the cellar now I don't care it's, it, if it snows if it rains or whatever happens but now I've got what I say like in construction, when I used to do construction work on my, on my rental properties, I always said getting the sheetrock from the store to the house was job one. Then job two was getting the sheetrock put up on the walls and spackled. But yo, that first part of the job was always the hardest. Well, sometimes on this, just getting the parts inside, getting everything clean, human that you can work on it. Because there is a point if you let a bike go, that, then you really don't even want to work on it, but I try to keep it. I, I really do try to do the maintenance. Now, I want to take the mirrors off too, and I can put this bike back in his slot. And I always find it helpful, even if I were to disturb this. Right now, what would be a second choice if I wasn't shooting video? Here's another choice. You could lay the parts out in the order you took them apart, if you're a backyard mechanic. Now, take a picture with your phone or your camera. Now you could see this part went in first, that part that part, that, boop, boop, boop. Just, it just makes it a little bit easier. And if you're a professional mechanic, well, that's cool too, but this helps us guys that just don't do this every day. Now it's no secret, I like everything shiny. And I had painted all the mirrors for all the bikes, except for the RD. So today we can resolve that problem. And we will have, all the bikes in the fleet will have shiny black mirrors by the end of the week. Now also on these mirrors, and I'll, I'll work on this later, I'll explain what this, all this writing on here, it just makes me crazy that they have to do it. This all has to get sanded off. It's a lot of work doing the mirrors. I may even do them separate because I want to get, the idea is I want to get the RD parts drying. They'll need to dry a couple days before I can buff them out. Maybe while I'm doing that, I can, well, I'm going to play it by ear. Getting this done this morning, when it was just a few degrees above freezing, Getting that done, I feel like uh, I got a lot accomplished today already. Because I'm still recovering from this terrible, terrible cold I've had. So the idea today, of course, was get the parts off the bike, bring them downstairs, and I'll have a couple of nice days working inside where it's nice and warm. And the coffee pot is never that far away. Now on a job like this, I, if I have one thing to share, it's, it's always this. You, you start taking something apart and it turns into a little bit bigger job. Usually you anticipate something you, and it turns out to be a bigger job than you thought. And then in the back of your mind, you say, well, is this going to be worth it? And then you have to decide, is all this effort you put into these things worth it? Well, you, you, I can't decide that for you. You have to decide. But I know for me, every time I need some inspiration, I just look at some of the bikes that have already been restored and I think, wow, worth every minute. Time to get down in the cellar, stop oogling and get drinking coffee.
Yes, for sure. Oogling is a good is good medicine when you're sick, and I gotta take my medicine. And when you get in from that cold garage, oh man, nothing is better. Nothing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to evaluate this. Now these parts, I'm going to try to polish them on the wheel, but they are pitted. I don't know. I'm going to look out in my bucket of uh, wonderful things that I have and see if I have any that are in better condition. I do have some. I don't know how many. I don't know if they're any better than these, but I will try to polish these up anyway. But because this is really, uh, you know, this is this is not a uh, anything. See, this side polished up nice, but the front where it takes a beating, the stone chips and stuff, it's it, these are in rough shape. That'll be a job while paint is drying. This, I wanted to polish up, but keep in mind, well, I want to show this up close. There's already pits in this. There's already very, I don't know if I can get this on. I'm not sure I can get this with a macaron. Do you see the little pits? Well, you know, you can polish that until the cows come home. It'll be better, and then I'll put some more flits on it. I've been polishing it, try, just trying to keep it from getting any worse, because I'm assuming, see on the bottom here where it's really bad, but you don't see that. But the problem is, when you go to buy these parts anywhere, you can't go and get a brand new one. You get one that's just as pitted as the one you have. These, of course, here's the whole trick with this. I want to pull off all the paint off of these parts. I don't want to do a schmuck job and just paint right over this. I want to get all the paint off of this. These are metal parts. Should be relatively easy. Once I have my coffee, I'll start figuring this out, how I want to do this. Maybe I'll even try putting some paint remover on that and just letting it sit for a while. But I want to start with bare metal because these are parts you really, you, you can't buy new ones, of course. But even when you get some off the internet or eBay, they're just as bad a shape as the ones you have. So by taking this down to bare metal and really doing a super gloss and we already have black in the gun. Getting these as glossy as the 650 project. This will be this a little amount of work here that you think, ah, oh, nobody will even notice that. Believe me, when it's done, I'll notice it. Maybe you will too. So the first step is I need to get a pan. I need to get some serious protective gloves if I have them. Let's see if I do. Oh, yes, I do. And you don't want to just have rubber gloves on because I don't want paint remover to get on anything. All right, that's our Jasco paint remover, and you're not supposed to move it around. I just want to get a coat on everything. This will usually do quick work of most paint. And you don't know how many layers of paint are on this, including the factory paint, but we'll give this about 10 minutes to sit here. And obviously when we're all done, we'll uh, just make a good cleanup of this. This is not something I like to have in a house with, I don't, I don't like, Actually, I wish I could do this outside, but it's just too, just too cold. And this stuff does not seem to work as well when it's cold. It seems like it works better when it's warm. And in fact, I wanted to show this in real time like I usually do. In fact, look at this. I'm just show this. That, that one's almost done. Now, if you, if you decide you're going to paint over the old paint, I, I have found that not to be a good choice because... Anytime I could start with with bare metal instead of instead of you got somebody else's paint and from who knows what from Uzbekistan, who knows the history of these parts, the bike, I have no idea. But once I can clean off all this old paint, and it's only a matter of about I ten minutes to do the whole part, and I'll wire wheel this all down, get it rough. Actually, I'll try to get it primed today if I can. It doesn't look like there's any body work on it. If there is, that'll add a little time to it, but I just would, anytime I can, I'd like to be down to raw metal. And double gloves, needless to say, on any of these. This is stuff I, I don't like to have. The alternative would have been to sand this off, and that would have been just as messy. 
And on a cold day like this, it gives me an excuse to be in the house and doing this. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna let that sit for five minutes, 10 minutes maybe. Go have some more coffee and then that'll probably be ready to wipe the rest of it off. All right, now it's just a question of wiping off as much of the paint removal with paper towels as we can. Go over to the wire wheel and get some of this back down to bare metal. There's usually some primer in spots. I have to see if there's any body work on these. I do remember doing some body work on one of them at one time, but we're actually down to whatever the factory puts on here as a, a factory primer. That'll come right off with a wire wheel and we'll be ready to be ready to work on these guys. This actually was pretty painless. Now they are really in raw metal here, except this one, if I remember right, this one needs a little body work. One of them does. Yeah, there's a little dent. I've got to take care of that body work. And I want to wire brush down the, the headlight and then get a little Bondo in there and get these hands sanded down and ready for primer. So the Jasco did what it's supposed to do. It got 90% of the paint, maybe even a little more. Now, this will take a little time to get this completely clean. Then when I'm all done, I'll do the inside with some sandpaper, because I want to prime the inside also, because I don't want it to, I don't want it to rust, of course. And then I want it, I have to be real careful taping off this area, because it is a real precision fit into that ring, that chrome ring. So I don't want to lose that fit and have a sloppy fit. So I don't think I showed this before. This is available at Lowe's and it seems to do a reasonably good job of getting rid of 90% of the paint in one shot. But obviously eye protection, hand protection, I always use double gloves when I'm using this stuff. Now another tip, as soon as I'm done with this, I'll take it right outside to the outdoor garbage and dump it. Put it in a plastic bag and dump it. Now before I get some primer on this, I want to clean inside of here, scuff it because I'm going to prime in here. Actually going to paint in here too. But I've got to, once I get the black paint on, I've got to get rid of that lip because if I build up a lot of paint on that lip, what's going to happen, it's going to crack. But I do have to get the black to go down into that valley there. So, or you'll see it. But this is, I'll blow this out with compressed air. All of these parts, and that one part, that has to be uh, bondoed. I got to take care of that right now. And while that bondo is drying, I can be priming the other parts. So, so inside and out, we are, well, these two are ready. This one's got to be bondoed. I got to make some little handles, something to hold this anyway. And we've had really good luck with the 4CR bondo. This is glass filled bondo. And the spot we have to fill, you can see, is like crash damage or something. And I, this was a very visible thing when I had this on the motorcycle. And it really annoyed me that I didn't get it done right the first time. Well, we're going to get it done right now. So here's one little tip with Bondo. Always squeeze the hardener. They call it kneading. Like kneading the dough. Anyway, I, I don't need to uh, mix up a big batch of this, that's for sure. But... Hey, a good question. If there's anybody out there that's really, they can really see things before they happen. Try to take a guess what kind of cereal I prefer. What's my favorite cereal? You win that, you win a free thing of Bondo. Now I did this one time. This is actually a full box of cereal. And I put it back on the shelf, of course, because I had no place else to mix Bondo. I forgot to tell Karen, and she said, we can't eat that. Oh, there's, there's boogers on it or something. Well, it was Bondo. Green Bondo. This is really good stuff, though, believe me. Now, again, I got to fix this. This is going to be, and I will make sure I get this right. My ego is at stake. 
and I'll block sand this down. Now while this is drying, just as a little sequencing, while this is drying, we can get the other two parts primed. Sit that up by a heating vent, and we'll prime the other two parts. Now, heat, of course, any kind of two-part or polyester resin heat will kick that off in a matter of, of a minute or so while we're out there priming. So the only thing left here is to figure out how I'm going to hold these parts, because I do want to want to come up with something useful for holding them. Now anytime I'm do going down to bare metal, bare metal, self-etching primer, and this is a primer that I like to let dry overnight. Now you're always better with two or three light coats than trying to get on one big, big coat all at once. So we'll try to do this in light coats. We're down to bare metal and that's good. Try to get inside. Give this about 15 minutes to dry and we'll put a second coat on. See if the bondos dry by now and I'm going to do this whole thing with a block try to pick up all the high spots I'm starting with 180 but I'm going to work my way right down into 600 and then get some primer on this hopefully get it a little bit better than it was before now if I wind up doing this without a hard block I'm gonna wind up with and I'd really not like not to do that so the block helps me keep it all right that part's ready for primer now and then we'll wait every by 15 20 minutes and then get a second coat of primer on everything and that's probably all we're gonna get done today uh, this was this was really good to get this much done Well, the stay ended and we got Coats a primer on everything. Everything looks like it's going to be great for painting tomorrow. I'm just old school. I like to let always let primer dry overnight if possible. Eh, I'm not sure you have to do that, but I, I'm just used to doing it that way. So if it's a paintable day tomorrow, we can get this painted. And then the, my plan is while these parts are dry and in between coats, we have, I'm trying to set this up, we have some parts to polish on a polishing wheel and the lowest priority thing to do the mirrors, get rid of that lettering, make these shiny so they match the rest of the bikes in a collection. But this was a big thing to do today. This, it sounds like this would be a little baby project that nobody would ever notice if you didn't do it. I don't think that's true at all. I think the people that have a passion for this notice every, they notice every rusty bolt and screw. And if you don't have a passion, nobody's going to hate you. You can eat Cheerios. It's no, you can eat Bondo. But but the people that do have a passion and do enjoy watching these videos and learn and share from each other, this, you, if you have to ask the question, you probably don't even want to know the answer. So this, this worked out great today. We used up a day that I'm still recovering from being sick. And I don't know how long this is going to go on. This is this years from now. I think it's going to be funny to look back at this pandemic thing. And but, but while it's happening, it wasn't really uh, it was a pain anyway. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're restoring something that's fun. And thanks for watching. So I did get some photos at the end of the day here. And it really wasn't the kind of lighting that I'd like. But sometimes you have to go to war with the army you have. But there are certain angles that I think the bike really looks good. It is a nice sunset angle. 
just as the sun is going down behind the horizon. But I did notice shooting it in bright sunlight, almost useless. It's just too too sparkly and shiny, and uh, ref there's always reflections on it. And so I'm going to have to be aware of that if I shoot pictures. But it was a good day. I did get a lot done. And the main thing is I got started on this RD project that I wanted to do. And there's just some things, the way this the virus is working out and my health, it's, it's just good that I get something done every day. It takes my mind off being sick. And I hope I'm really better very soon.